Election chief decides the fate of gas cylinder. SLPP is to snub its Ranil loyalists. Double gamers will face the sack. NPP plans to win the entire country. The leader, Deshita Magakiana, Prouti Pelagasma. Election chief decides the fate of gas cylinder. The winner of a national election is most likely to secure victory at the election that follows it soon after. J.R. in 1977, Premadasa in 1988, C.B.K. in 1994 and Mahinda, Sirisena and Gota, thereafter one like that. So, the losers consider such an election to be a curse on them because they know that they will be wiped out, adding to the misery of serious erosion within. Today's situation is exactly like that. It is all the more interesting because the party considered to be the third force, the NPP, has become the winner. After it formed a government, the other two parties that shared the power previously have lost ground. They try their best to unite and face the upcoming election. For the SJB, UNP and the SLPP, it will be like being sent to hell. An unhappening gas cylinder. The gas cylinder symbol group led by Renil is facing the worst crisis of all. They are unable to decide from which symbol they should contest. With talks already underway with the SJB, Renil promised leaders of the parties supporting him that a decision would be given on Saturday. By Friday, that talks collapsed due to Sajith's condition that Renil should quit as the UNP leader. So, trophy, chair, and elephant parties met later in the day and decided that it should be the gas cylinder. Accordingly, Ravi K wrote to the election commission on the following morning, asking that his swan symbol party be given the gas cylinder symbol. The election chief told them a decision would be given on the 2nd of October, on which day the commission is due to meet. In the event of failure to secure the gas cylinder, some say they should contest under the swan symbol. But the chair party doesn't like it that much, Ramesh and Prasanna suggest contesting under the trophy symbol. Even that is opposed by some. Those in the UNP want it to be the elephant. So the biggest issue they are having today is a symbol to contest. That is the sorry plight of the parties that had boasted at one time of winning under almost any symbol. Manusha and Wajira insist on Ranil UNP activists in Gale, Badagama, Habaradua and Akmimana had meetings at their party office at Uluvitake recently with Wajira and Manusha in the chair. They adopted a proposal that Renil should remain as their leader. Contesting under the elephant symbol too was discussed. Now the party's social media team is campaigning to promote that suggestion. In the meantime, Ranil has appointed Kishan Theodore as the party's acting general secretary. Dinesh chairs a political meeting at a temple. Dinesh headed a meeting of the parties in the former government at a temple in Narahenpita yesterday, 30, to discuss contesting the upcoming general election. They elaborated on their options for a symbol too, gas cylinder, chair or trophy. Their fate will be decided by the election chief's decision due tomorrow. SLPP is to snub its Ranil loyalists. Maduma Bandara says the UMP hasn't responded favourably to the SJB's call for Ranil to step down for the two parties to unite. He also rules out accepting those accused of corruption in the UNP. After ending talks with Ranil's party, SJB's Lucky is presently plotting to obtain the support of some in the chair party. He has his eyes on up to four powerful figures from Kurunagala, Hambantota, Putalam and Gampaha. It is reported that in the event Ranil fails to secure the gas cylinder, several from chair and trophy parties will switch to the SJB. In the meantime, SLPP's Kariyawasam says none who had betrayed the party at the presidential polls will get nominations. Speaking to journalists in Colombo, he said the party would field candidates in all districts. Those who are with Ranil got wind of what he said and noted that Kariyawasam cannot keep his big mouth shut even after the worst of defeats. Double gamers will face the sack. A weekend newspaper said in a gossip column that the focus was on Gampaha at the presidential polls. Winner of that district normally goes on to win the election too. 
The telephone party, too, tried its best, although their district leader had his feet planted on two sides. In actual fact, he supported the elephant party boss. The leader of his party got to know about it and sent a team from Colombo to take care of things in Gampaja. But that one sabotaged their work, too. Further, he attended a television talk show boycotted by the telephone leader and got humiliated. Now the party is aware of his double game and plans to give him the sack. His electorate is to be given to someone else. Indeed, the above reference is to a former SJB MP in Gampaha. Sajith thinks of expelling all those who had secret dealings with Ranil. The doubtful ones are unlikely to get nominations, and even if given... The plan by his inner circle is to make sure they don't win. Among the targeted figures are big characters in the subject of economy. A list to come out too. Furthermore, a list of those who received many millions of decentralised funds from Renil is to be revealed. It includes ex-MPs from Colombo, Gampaha, Gale and Kurunagala. Also, recipients of bar permits are getting exposed too. One is from Kurunagala, who sold three permits for rupees, 90 million. He already accepted an advance payment of rupees, 21 million. Even the bank account number of the recipient is known. Such are the claims by mainstream and social media loyal to Sajith. NPP's Samarasinghe too is getting involved in the matter. He says one had sold the bar permit he received for rupees, 35 million. The younger brother of a former top one in Parliament opened a bar at Weda Hitikanda in Kataragama. Former government and opposition MPs struck deals with Ranil and received 29 bar permits in return. Their names will be made public soon, adds Samara Singhi. Now a cancellation of those licences is awaited as per an election promise given by AKD. Cabinet to be restricted to 25 and no state ministers. The MPP government has the world's smallest cabinet and is without any state ministers. Its three ministers share the responsibilities among them. AKD had his first cabinet meeting and the decisions were announced by Vijitha. According to him, a new government by them will have a maximum of 25 ministers. It will have no state ministers, he added. NPP plans to win the entire country. Without a doubt, the NPP is the only party that contests the upcoming polls with confidence. Its General Secretary, Dr Nihal Abasinghe, says they will gain a better mandate and rules out obtaining support from anyone else. Meanwhile, in an article in Irida Anida, Gamini Viangoda says those who didn't vote for AKD but expect a positive change in the political culture have a political and ethical responsibility to give a reasonable opportunity to the new president in that regard. For that, they should grant the MPP the power required in Parliament to carry out promised reforms, says Viangoda. The NPP's capabilities and limitations will be known only through such an opportunity. If their every attempt is sabotaged, they will fail just like Gota's regime did. History will not blame them, but their opponents, he adds. That's it for today. The leader, Deshita Magakiana, Pro Tipelagasma.